Welcome everyone to Around the ACL. that intro. Let's go. Just hit somebody with that intro. <laughs> As you can tell, that is not Trey Ryder. <laughs> that is Bernie. So uh, we've got Bernie joining us today uh, for Trey. We've got, of course, Anthony Ione and myself, Michelle Thompson. And we've got a lot of fun stuff to talk about today. We're just coming off of Pro Shootout number six and Open number 14. So we'll recap that. We have our last final chase coming up this weekend in Detroit. So we're going to go through briefly the singles and doubles brackets. We're going to give an update on where everyone's at with teams. And then Bernie and Anthony are going to do their power rankings for doubles. So lots of good stuff to get into. Uh, Anthony, what'd you think of uh, Ramsey? Uh, it was, I went outside one time and it felt like 200 degrees. <laughs> That's a really good description. <laughs> but then at night we got out of there late, right? What was it like nine o'clock or something? And then it was like, Ooh, this is nice. So I don't know. Yeah, it rained cool. a little bit. It cooled it down a little bit, but uh, that was, that was it. My one time actually outside was to grab some lunch that was right outside the door and then ran back inside. Cause it was a heat wave, man. It was hot. <laughs> totally was. How about you, Bernie? I, you know, I actually got to spend time in Minneapolis and saw the roving band of Swifties just like taking over downtown because she had she had two nights there and they were like eyeing each other up like these roving band of Swifties. Like it's going to be like something out of West Side Story downtown. Anyway, I kind of liked Minneapolis. I, I loved the tournament. I thought big shout out to the ACL production crew for making that space work. Yeah, that could have been bad, but they made that work. So that's really cool. It did. Everything looked good on TV. Uh, I think that the celebrities were great. Um, I thought, it, I think from home, nobody would know what we were, that we had kids soccer camps going on and various things. <laughs> yeah. Like, so yeah. like, I, think, I think it worked out really well. Yeah. The last kid got picked up as the lights were coming down. I was like, oh my God, can you imagine being a parent and you walk in and it's dark and all these adults roaming around your children? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <That's> so <true. laughs> it's a good point. I actually got um, upgraded to first class on my way home. You know, my flight what? got pushed. Um, Nonsense. Yeah, so I was supposed to fly out Saturday night, got pushed to Sunday morning at 7 a.m. My birthday party was supposed to be at 11 a.m. at my house, which I was like, I will technically just be walking in the door, but you know, a second. But anyways, I was in the same row as a couple Swifties because their flight got canceled. <laughs> They went a second night in a row. They went Friday night and Saturday night. I'm like, these people are crazy. Taylor They're Swift. crazy, man. It was downtown was nuts. You should have seen it. I mean, they were teenage to early 20 something girls everywhere causing trouble. I mean, it, it was like something from a punk concert, but they were all dressed in sparkles. It, it was really strange. <laughs> a little different. Uh, but our big event was not the Taylor Swift concert. It was the pro shootout and open event. So in pro shootout, uh, we had our men's singles winner was Gavin Cano, women's singles Cameron Belvin, and our doubles was Logan Chamberlain and Justin Burton Jr. So, Bernie, what were your thoughts on the pro shootout? Gavin Cano. I mean, actually, Anthony sat down with us at the streaming court, talked about it. His road to get to the finals was extraordinary, and he just he was the best guy in the building in singles all weekend long. I would still like to see him play better. I don't know what happens in doubles with him and Fisher because both now have done extraordinary things in singles, but they haven't put it together in doubles on a broadcast. But Gavin Cano is what I, is what I, all I could really think of from that weekend. How about you, Anthony? Yeah, so that finals was like you were saying, Gavin Cano versus Jimmy Humans, And to me, Cano was business all day. I mean, from, from starting with rounders all the way through, I actually followed him quite a bit. Um, just the way that it kind of played out in the morning, the matches that were around me, I followed him. And then as he started racking up wins, I'm like, I'm going to stay with this kid and I'm going to follow him to every single match business all day. I mean, he was, wasn't was really talking or joking around with people as much. He'd come off a court from a win, go right to his next right to his next match. He'd get on the boards and he's ready to go. He would take some big wins, no celebration, almost like I still got more work to do and he's looking at the next match. So he was business all day. But like you were saying, there was a definite discrepancy in the bracket path, the the the, uh, the difficulty to get through the path when you look at Kano and Jimmy Human. So look at this. Kano has to go through 2023 national champ uh, Hamilton, 2023 national champ Burton Jr. He had to go through Sutton, and I'll talk a little bit about Sutton. And then he had to go through number seven player in the world last year, Noah Almanza. That was his run to get there. 
So you're getting the best of Sutton yeah, uh, in, in that matchup. He had to go through. He he knocks out Steven Bernasette in match one, who we know came off of a uh, Natty 3 bracket final uh, out there at the last national. So he's coming in hot. He went through Hunter Thorne, a top 10 player, and he went through Devin Harbaugh, a top uh, 10 player. So that is the Dave Sutton that Kano had to get through. So you And put destroyed those, them. And destroyed, destroyed them, them, right? 21 up. Just yeah. went off. Um, so yeah, it was, um, he, he just was business all day. And in that match to get to TV, it was Kano versus Burton jr to get to TV. And the way that ended was pretty interesting. Kano was in, in control pretty much the whole match. JBJ kind of hung in there, kind of made it, made it interesting in the last round. I mean, as long as Kano didn't screw something up in the last round, it was his to win. He throws at a turn on bag one in the final round. So as we know, when you throw out a turn, your opponent now gets two throws to get back into the right rotation. Burton Jr. throws his bag. Connell's about to throw a bag again, and he really needs to thank Logan Chamberlain for this. And I respect Logan for this because he's playing against his pro partner. You see Logan kind of put his hand up. He's Me and Logan were standing next to each other on the other side of the court. He kind of puts his hand up to flag Kano. And Connell realized, oh, crap, I need to give Burton Jr. the second bag. And then caught him at that last moment. He would have lost that last round wow. if Logan Chamber didn't raise his hand. So um, That's crazy. You know, I didn't of, know that. Yeah, it's one of those things where you just, you know, you get into rhythm. How many times yeah. do you throw after your opponent and you just don't think about letting them go? But ultimately, uh, he, gets to the, he gets there and finishes it up. I'm super proud of that kid because he's just one of those players that – I really watch at the players' journeys through the season on how much are you working outside of nationals? You know, what what are your practice routines like? How much, you know, and a lot of people are more visible on Facebook. Some people are working hard in silence, but there are people that really show us their path and their journey. Connell's one of those guys that I just envision. He's throwing bags every day, multiple hours a day. And he's one of those guys. I watch people at tourneys too. Some people rest, some people keep throwing. You know, he's one of those guys that just keeps throwing. And I get that the older guys, their arms are going to get tired and they can't keep going. But the guy just grinds. I think he has a lot of grit. I like the way that he handles his losses. You know, we've seen him lose multiple times in doubles and he just takes them. And it, and, and instead of it deflating him, he uses, I think, uses it, I think, to to motivate him to just to keep grinding. So shout out to that guy. But some strong appearances. I think we should recognize Blake Karnick and yes. Ethan Walker. Um, Walker, another one of those players, a young kid who just continues to show that he can beat elite level talent. He knocks down, he knocks out Caleb Batson, who I think was one of the hottest players in the room, if not one of the best players in the room. Batson's just on something lately. He knocks Batson out. He beats Harbaugh in rounders. He made a decent run. And then Karnick, one win from TV. So what, uh, just to shout out to those guys, um, on the women's side, if we just kind of move into women's singles, we got Cameron Belvin taking out uh, Kimberly Glass. How about Kimberly Glass uh, showing up on a TV broadcast? It's been a while, right? If we go yeah. back to maybe 18. Well, she was on Super Bowl not, yes. not that long ago. She jumped right. in on Super Bowl. I actually I felt bad for her because I know she wanted to play better. And you could see it on her face. She's like, oh, that wasn't my best game. I just she really didn't know like she it. made the broadcast. She yeah, wasn't yeah, paying so, attention yeah. to the broadcast. Yeah. And someone had to tell her, like, oh yeah, you're you're on TV tonight. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, so she was she was one of those faces that we saw back in 18, 19 pre-COVID that was on TV. She was at the Super Bowl, like you were saying. It's like, oh, maybe she got like this new taste. Ah, oh, this is what it's like to be on TV. And what do you know? She makes it right back to the broadcast. Both ladies were top, they were one, two in stats in the whole women's division. Um, but really, Belvin to me showing out on the DPR side. She had a 1.09. I just want to put this in perspective for some people. A lot of people shoot tens or plus. If you shoot a 10 plus in the tournament, okay, great. Really, really no pat on the back for that. You'll have 10, 15 players do that in one tournament. But a 10.5 PPR in an entire tournament is really, really difficult to do. You'll get one guy doing that, if any, sometimes zero. To me, a one plus DPR is like throwing a 10.5 plus PPR in a tournament. One person's going to do it or nobody. And that's what Cameron did uh, on the DPR side. So shout out to her. And it kind of made sense, right? For her to win six. Yes. If we go back to the couple last yeah. couple, two years, she yeah. always waits to the end. 
She won seven and eight shootout seven and number shootout eight over the last couple of years and comes in and wins six. So she's a, she's an end of the season kind of gal, you know, and, and that's tough, you know, because everyone wants to knock it out as soon as possible. So for those that don't know, once you win a shootout, you're done. You make the elite eight at the end of the season, but Cameron Belvin's always trying to squeeze it in right, right at there at the end. Did you, were you going to say something there, Bernie? It looked like, no, she just likes to travel. I mean, let's be honest. She, she, she likes to travel. <laughs> she, uh, she, she's pushing it back further and further and further. No, I, I can see it on her face. She, she wants to win, obviously, first. She, everyone wants to be Cheyenne Bubenheim, win the first shootout, and then just kind of play doubles or whatever for the rest of the shootout series. But I, you could see it. She was. I talked to her about 30 minutes before they started. I actually sat down, had a little conversation with her. She knew she had to win. As much as she respects Kimberly Glass, as much as everyone respects Kimberly Glass, and this is not a knock on Kim at all, if you were to ask 256 pros in the room who should win every time they play, who are they going to say? Belvin. Cameron Belvin, more than likely, right? Unless they're really close friends with Kim. And Cameron, you know, she she kind of some some could say maybe gave one away to Gina. Didn't didn't really give her best in Arizona, and so I think she was trying to make up for it. But I think she was, I I think she had some travel issues, and I think if she wasn't able to win this one, she may not have been able to compete in some of the others, the last two. So it well, was she it was, she kind was of, a lot less nervous, and you could tell. Yeah, yeah, she was she was ready. She was ready. She was, and then uh, in our open event, we had Trey Birchfield and Ryan Smith win, which was a, a team that got slapped together at the very end due to their partners not being able to make it there uh, with the Florida Storms and then singles Mark Richard. Give Mark Richards another title. Why not? <laughs> dude is good. The dude is so, dude good. is so good, man. And by the way, isn't it kind of nice to see Trey Birchfield win something again? Yeah, I guess he was kind oh, of yeah, like a hundred percent because he he was in he, the people he was staying with were all cha just recent champs, and he's like, "What the heck? Where's my title?" <laughs> yeah, I'm 20 years old and I'm a has been. Like, what happened? Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, uh, Bernie, give us your thoughts on the open event, both doubles and singles. I, you know, Mark Richards is starting to do things that I don't think many of us thought he could do. Last year was so extraordinary; he put up such amazing numbers. Now the guy is fourth all time in wins in a season and a half. Right. If you extrapolate that out, Anthony, yeah. what's he looking at being the all time win leader by this time next season? I mean, the guy is putting together a season. I, I mean, I, I think he either wins Detroit or he wins Worlds in singles. And I, I think I, I, I think, yeah, there's my hot take. I think he's I, I think he's he's on one again, man. He's as the game adjusted. We talked about Anthony, you and I kind of talked about off off camera year of the carpet bag and, and the types of players that are, that have kind of ascended Mark has adjusted his game just enough to keep up with that. Right. And, and he's just, he's a different guy, man. He's a, he's a different guy. You know, what's interesting is he's almost mocking last season. It was right out shootout five when he started to pop off. He then rattled Ooh. off the doubles national championship. He went on to win the singles and then he was the world champ, and it started with shootout five. And if we go back to shootout five, he won singles in shootout five. So here he is winning an open. So if history repeats itself, he's going to go out to Detroit and win something, singles or doubles, and then yep. he's going to go on to win worlds. But, yeah, there's like this little uh, kind of trend of him popping off at the end of the season. And all of the talk about is he going to have a sophomore slump? Yeah, yeah. not the case. You know, yeah. the thing about Mark Richards is we haven't really been talking about him a bunch this season. Um, and I think just because there's been all these other storylines that have been going on with the rookies and some of the other stuff going on, but make no mistake, Mark Richards is a top player in the world and he continues to show that. And I just love, I continue to be blown away by how he approaches the game, just from an IQ perspective, his pace, his cadence, just the way that he handles bad shots, knowing he's going to give up points in the round, always looking to the next round. He doesn't like get so caught up in the moment. He knows that the game is going to be longer and then there's going to be an opportunity for him to come back and do what Mark Richards does. And I think that's what separates him from a lot of the players in the league is just, he just kind of has this, just kind of this mood that just looks confident and like he always has a chance to win. You know what I, the greatest compliment I could give Mark Richards? If I was to have a child and I would say, you know how I want you to compete in any sport, regardless of what the sport is, I want you to compete like that guy. Mm -hmm. I want you to be that guy. His temperament, his comp his competitiveness, all of it. I want you to be like that guy, and that's the greatest yeah. compliment I can give. He him. is. He's a great. He's a great example of good sportsmanship and and confidence without being, but still remaining humble and but not 
degrading of yourself like because it's a balance right like you don't want to yeah. be cocky but you also want to acknowledge that you're good and so like he really <laughs> has that kind of all figured out uh yeah. how to show up in there you know and and i would agree with that yeah, and what no about doubt. doubles anthony um yeah i mean if we look at doubles um you know let's look at I, I think it's kind of fun sometimes to look at and this just speaks to how much talent there is out there not everybody makes a tier one Bracket yeah. in uh, I, I knew you were going to bring this up. That's so funny. You know? I didn't know I was coming on this show till late last <laughs> night, but I knew you were going to bring this up. That's Just a so. hundred and we're talking about 120 plus players are making a tier one bracket. So you would think in your mind, okay, all of the, all the pros are going to make the tier one bracket, not the case. And in some cases you have players playing with other people like a Joe K going out and playing with a Corey Ballard, you know, whatever, <laughs> however that partnership made out you still expect pros to make it. Wooten and Belvin didn't make tier one. You know, you got an easy Eric Zockline and the Jimmy humans not making tier one. So I'm like, what is going on? You know, and if you kind of go down, Billingham, Tennyson, okay. Mathis, uh, Lashley, Seals, and Irwan, I would expect to make a tier one. Al Tice and Robertson have shown a lot of talent in the past. I expect them to make tier one. So it's tough. I mean, you get some of these amateurs coming in, and, uh, you know, you could even go sometimes go four and two and yeah. not make a tier one. So it's, it's well, pretty especially difficult. this one because it was only 35 that were making it into tier one. So 35 teams. So it, it was it was tough to get that spot for sure. But uh, congratulations to Trey and Ryan. Uh, it was cool. I told Ryan, I said, I guess you're going to be throwing witchers now because. I feel like he had a lot of success with that um, non carpet bag of a pro sniper and um, I know he's been throwing the Witchers in the last couple tournaments, and I think that will probably continue based on his success here. And big Next. shout out to Ryan, by the way. I mean, the guy's losing his voice. He has to get another surgery on his throat. Like, that would unnerve me. I mean, can you imagine, like, the possibility of, yeah, you, you might not be able to communicate with human beings in a little yeah. while because of your throat. Yeah, like, that's, no doubt. That, that, would, that would be really unnerving, and he just doesn't care, goes out and wins tournaments. He handles so it big well. Big shout out. Some of those singles brackets were really lopsided. I mean, if you looked at bracket A, it was dumb. You had Harbaugh, Chamberlain, Tony mm -hmm. Smith, Fisher Hamilton, Matt Guy, Jacob Trzinski. And then you look at bracket C, and you really <laughs> just have a, a Birchfield, Bernaset, Kano. And then who yeah. ends up coming out of that? You got Schrader, and mm -hmm. uh, who, who was it Who was it that you – and Kufis. Uh, Kufis. Yeah. You know, that, was a, up, that was a weird one. Yeah. And, and then Kufis ended up, uh, you know, coming out. He's a 42nd ranked pro and comes out and ends up winning a bracket. So, um, yeah. yeah, that was interesting how that shook out, too. Absolutely. Next up, we have the final chase coming up this weekend. Pro singles coverage is going to begin at 12 p.m. Eastern on Saturday, July 1st on ACL Cornhole TV. And the finals will be live on ESPN2 at 9 p.m. Eastern. And um, that will be Saturday, July 1st. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to spend a couple minutes on each bracket, just briefly looking over who we have. So uh, Bernie, we'll start with you on bracket <laughs> A, Devin Harbaugh's bracket. All right, let me bring that up. Hold on, let me move the glasses for everybody. You got <laughs> Devin, I mean, Cody Johnson, Bob Bonch there, going through, Andrew Guy can play. Ian Cripps, by the way, a nine seed. Shout out to Ian, is having a heck of a season for a guy that barely got in from last year. Good for him. Frank Mollin, eight. Alex Rawls is a four. Could be very dangerous. Uh, going down, Ethan Walker that you mentioned earlier, Anthony. I, I really like his A game is extraordinary. It's he's, if, if he could cut out some of the mistakes, right? If, if, if Ethan could cut out some of the mistakes, I think you're talking about a top 15 player and that's saying something these days. But, I mean, I can't go away from my guy, so I got Devin coming out of my side. You're picking Devin for the left? All yep. right. Anthony, what about on the right? Yeah, right side. Your top seed is going to be Fisher Hamilton at the two seed, and we can break it up into one, two, three, four quadrants. The number three seed, who's going to be in the bottom, Hunter Thorne. And if we look at the top two quadrants, I mean, you got Fisher Hamilton, and really, I, I'm looking at a Chris Kingsbury, you know, making his way through one, two, three wins to eventually run into Hamilton in the top fourth in that second piece. Damon Dennis looking really good. I'm kind of going down this one. Adam Hisner, who's not even a top seed, he's coming in at the 26th seed. I can see Adam Hisner or Shipner, who's actually been playing extremely well this season, unexpectedly, you know, maybe fighting against a Damon Dennis. So Damon Dennis, a, 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 an open winner, maybe a 
Fisher Hamilton versus Damon Dennis in the top half and then the bottom half. I mean, Hunter Thorne, obviously a top 10 player breaking out from last season who was like in the 70th position, position or something like that. Maybe getting challenged by a Timmy Jonas who's coming off of a state championship in doubles. But you got Kyle Malone in there hovering around the 14 seed. In my opinion, Kyle Malone isn't a 14 seed. He's probably he should probably be your you know two or three seed. So Hunter Thorne's going to have some some work to do to get through a Kyle Malone, and that doesn't even get him to Alex Hicks, who's probably going to come out of the bottom. So, man, I like a Fisher Hamilton versus Alex Hicks, um, but Malone's going to hate me for that, and he deserves it. It probably should be you know Malone versus a uh, uh, Fisher Hamilton, which which could be fun as well. You still picking Hamilton to come out of that right side? Have to, yeah. have to. He's the reigning national champ, right? Yep. He's coming yep. out of there. Hamilton Harbaugh would be a nice final, don't you think? No doubt. Yeah, I'm here to see it. All right, we're going into <laughs> bracket B. Take it away, Bernie. As soon as it comes up. Oh, Mark Richards bracket. Yeah, um, I got it. it's not coming up for me. Hold on. And Mark second. Richards bracket off of what he's just done in the last couple events. I don't think I would want to be in that bracket. That that seems extra scary to me. And honestly, well, I can't get my brackets to come up now. So that's I'll awesome. talk about the I'll talk about the right way, side. Way to, go, way to go, technology. Let's see. <laughs> my top seeds in the right side. So this is going to be bracket B. You got Joe Neistead coming in at the two seed. Um, and you got Trzinski in the bottom half of that coming at the three seed. So if it's all chalk, you should get a Neistead versus Trzinski. But who's going to mess that up? I've got Gavin Cano in the top half, who just showed what he can do in a shootout format. Um, I've got Ryan Smith who's coming off of a doubles open championship coming in hot. And then I've got Ryan Windsor, who was another player who made it to the bottom of that open. We didn't see him in the final four, but that's going to be tough. Um, I, I actually kind of see an upset here here. I don't see Joe Neistead coming out of the two position. I'm really liking how Gavin Cano looked in the shootout format. If he brings that same level of intensity, that same, just all business look, I like him coming out of the top half out of the 10 seed. And then if I look below, I don't see why Jacob Trzinski doesn't take this bottom half. I mean, who's going to challenge him? A Cody Henderson, I think is the best challenge. Who's been playing really well this season. How about a Kano versus Trzinski to take the right side with Kano winning it? Stop playing. Wow. Uh, that, that's pretty strong. Yeah. All right. I, I finally got it up. Sorry about that. Thanks for help hooking me up. Professor uh, Mark Richards. I mean, I, what did I say earlier? I said that he's either winning in Detroit or he's winning the world mm -hmm. championships. Could he could possibly do both. But if I'm looking through, uh, let's see, Carson Getty can, can, can be, you know, can play really well at times. I just, if I'm looking through that quadrant, I just, I don't see anybody really being able to take down Mark. If I go down to Jay Rubin as a nine seed, it's going to be tough. You know, a 41 seed in Jackson Gore seems a little low for me. Obviously, he's not playing as well as his brother is this this season, but still still a kid that can bring it. Trey Birchfield, even though it was in doubles, I still think the confidence of coming off of a win, whether it be in an open, whether it be anywhere, just the confidence of winning something will be good for Trey Birchfield. But you're looking at that uh, game 36 with possibly Steven Bernasette and Birchfield. That's going to tell us a lot about both players and where they're at. But you look at the four seed, a Matt guy going down to the next quadrant. Matt Guy going through David Morris and Miranda Coy should be interesting. Eddie Grindersleeve is a 13, is very dangerous. Nothing Clemmer is a 20, is dangerous. I think Matt Guy is fine. Like, he's a four seed now, but he's climbing to a four seed. I think he had a rough start early in the season, first couple of nationals. Won a bracket in the last national. I think Matt Guy is going to be really tough. If you go down, you got Dylan Turpin as the five. Cedro, Jeremy Shermerhorn, Brooklyn Pear, Thielen. I think it's going to be, gosh, if I had to press myself, Matt Guy and Mark Richards in the final of the left side. I think it's Mark Richards. I got I to gotta go. I mean, I, I'm going chalk. I've gone one seeds. I mean, I've, I've got to go outside the one seeds at some point, but I'm going one and one so far. All right. Sounds good. We're moving on to bracket C. Uh, we'll start with Anthony so you can get that loaded up. I got it. It came right up this time. I got oh, it. Oh, it came now. right up. All right, cool. So yeah. we got Caleb Batson. Caleb as a one seed, I, I, it's funny. I would really like to debate this with Anthony. Was that just the one national that we get from Caleb that he played so well? Like he had a month P 
period there where he was like the best player in the room, or is this now who he is? I don't know. And this I is think who this, he is. Yeah, I think Caleb this Batson nat- just got through his high school. You yeah. know, and so that done. was his, yeah, yeah. This I'm dude is slinging bags right now, and he looks good. Yeah, I think, that, he got, I think he's here to stay. Yeah, I got Jordan Power, who has been a little up and down. He got, but I like Caleb coming out of that quadrant. Terry Mathis can always give people trouble. Tanner Halbert is a 25 seed, still mind blowing to me. Moses has way to there. I think if you're looking at those top two quadrants, I mean, if, if this is who Caleb Batson is, then he kind of he gets through those top two quadrants. Down to Derek Holland is a four seed. Uh, going through this, I mean, Jeremy Frazier is a 13 is very dangerous to me. I think he's very underrated. I mean, his 13 seed, I think, is a little lower than his actual skill level right now. So I think, you know what? I'm going to take Jeremy coming through that somehow. A.J. Sims is a five, sneaky five. Uh, Derek King, do we get him back up to who DK used to be? I think A.J. Sims comes through that. I hate Curtis Haddock's coming as a 12. I think he's really rising. But I'm taking Jeremy Frazier and Caleb Batson. I can't. I can't go against it. I'm going one seat again. Caleb Batson, the one, coming through the left side of the bracket. Hard not to. Yeah. Hard not to. All right, Anthony, who's coming on the right? The right side is is light. I mean, this is an opportunity for people to come through. If I'm looking at the top half, you got Jacob Gore in the top seat. I don't see any reason why he wouldn't come out of that top fourth. You talk about the, the number two spot of the second fourth, wide open. Uh, Jeremiah Hector. Gabe Dolan, Justin Carpenter, who has shown some elite level play. This is your chance to make it to a semifinals. Um, You got to get through Noah Almanza is really going to be the toughest, toughest uh, fight there in that middle section. If we go to the bottom, what do we get from Jamie Graham? This is going to be a really important national to see what we look like going into worlds. Obviously, Jamie going through a lot of stuff in the personal, and we have seen how that affects other players like Weedenfield, like other players out there, all players when you're dealing with stuff off the court. But this one's kind of light too here in the bottom. Um, Ferreira, here's your chance to make it to a semifinal. We know he's got elite level talent. Uh, a Felix Vargas, who's really been showing out really good as a, as a rookie. Here's your chance to make it to a, uh, a semifinal. But I think it's Cheyenne Bubenheim, who's kind of all the way at the bottom in the sixth seed, who's going to come out of the bottom going through a Jamie Graham. Um Man, that's tough. I would say Jake. I would say Jake Gore comes out of the right side. So one versus two, all chalk all the time, baby. You guys are so boring. All right. <laughs> hey, I picked. I picked Kano. Who's like? Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. like the last seed, not the last seed, but close. <laughs> all, right, all right, going into bracket D. Can we talk more about how good Alan Rawls has been in singles? We actually don't have time. Nationals? But I mean, yeah. un- unbelievable. Alan Rawls is the one seed, but Ryan Wiedenfeld sitting there at a thirty-two. I think that is very sneaky. So I, golly, I, I'm taking Wiedenfeld. I'm pulling the upset here. Ryan Wiedenfeld takes down Allen Rawls at least in the winners bracket on that side. Jay Dotson a nine. Uh, if I'm going through there, Kobe Costanza has been playing better. Nico, I think, is kind of. I, I hope hasn't plateaued, but I feel like I've gotten a little bit of a plateau out of Nico recently. Logan Chamberlain at a four, I find very dangerous. Uh, going down, Brett Guy's a sneaky 12. Matt Creek Killer is a five. I've got Logan Chamberlain playing Ryan Wienfeld to go to the finals. I'm putting Logan Chamberlain in from the left side of this bracket. Mm-hmm. All right. there's a, there's, there, it's a four it, seed. It's a four it, seed. It's not if Anthony deep. picks a chalk, that would be an interesting finals there, considering who it is. Mm-hmm. We got Anthony. Yeah, top fourth. <laughs> Who's going to take down Justin Burton Jr.? I, I don't see it happening. Um, I mean, these players are going to – Purser, you got to go through Burton Jr. Storm Hogue, we're going to need, you know, last season Storm Hogue and doubles to come through here. Uh, moving down to the next one. Oh, wide open. Eric Anderson, here's your chance to make it to a semifinal. Nate Stevens, uh, who we've seen pop off. It's going to be one of those two guys coming out of there. Nate Stevens versus Eric Anderson to get out of the number two spot. Everyone in that third in that third quadrant, you're gonna have to deal with Tony Smith. Who's the toughest? Who's the toughest uh, competition for Tony Smith? If we get Dave Sutton, who just went through Bernisette, Thorne, and whoever that other guy was, if you can help me remember, Bernie Devin Harbaugh. Devin Harbaugh. Thank you. If we get that David Sutton, he could challenge a Tony Smith. But Tony Smith is going to be dominant in the third quadrant. If we go down to the fourth one, it opens up a little bit. You've got Philip Lopez, who just showed 
he showed out in singles at the open. Really proud of that guy. You know, he's kind of been a little quiet or suspect in, in singles enough to stay in the, in the top, you know, in the kind of top 10, 15% of the league, but really showing out. We know he's a doubles guy. I, Maybe I like a Nick Williams who's been playing really, really well. I think he's in the top 20s out of Cali. I think he's the highest ranked Cali player outside of Hunter Thorne. Um, gosh, how do you not say Justin, Justin Burton Jr. versus Tony Smith to come out of the right side? And that is a coin flip. Oh my <laughs> gosh. I, I can't even pick. I, I can't even pick. It's just going to be yeah. a good fight. It's going to be 21 20 over, over 38 rounds. <laughs> so get get ready for that yeah uh, all right moving into doubles pro doubles coverage begins 2 p.m eastern on friday june 30th on acl cornell tv and the finals will be live on espn2 at 9 p.m on saturday july 1st we'll get started here in bracket a with uh bernie over there on the left side speaking i would of talk smith. a lot yeah i would talk a lot about this smith and trzinski obviously your one seeds sorry michelle I didn't mean to interrupt you there no you're good I think this is pretty simple, and I mean zero disrespect to all the other names on this list. This is Matt Guy, Jamie Graham, playing against Tony Smith, Jacob Trzinski to get to the finals. <laughs> Who you I think it's Guy. I'm going Guy and Grant. Oh, okay. A little upset, a little upset there to get, to get to the finals. Okay. Anthony, right side. All right, on double, so the brackets are going to shrink in half. So we just got a top half and a bottom half. Uh, your top seed in A out of the right side, Ryan Smith and Ryan Wiedenfeld. We know that they've been killing it this year, a top 10 doubles team. Who's going to test them in the top half? Bernisette King, um, nothing crazy yet, right? Now I know a late, a late doubles team coming into the season. They still have time. They got a national in the worlds to kind of start clicking as a team, figure out bags, kind of work through that. I think that's going to be their toughest competition in the top half. Uh, can Hogue Stout, you know, we need like, what was it, two years ago, Matthew Stout and last year Storm Hogue. If we can get those two, maybe they challenge Ryan Smith and Ryan Wiedenfeld, but I don't see anyone taking them out. In the bottom half, Malone Humans. This is their bracket. Now they got a little bit more tough. They've got a Camba Baldwin. They've got a McGuffin Dennis. Um, and an Avery pair, I think, could be could surprise some people and maybe make a little bit of a run. I'm trying to not I'm trying to pick someone not chalk Mish just to make it fun, but <laughs> I mean it's pretty dominant by Smith Wiedenfield versus Malone Humans to come out of the right side. And I actually like Malone Humans, who were the lower seed in this one coming out of the right, All right. side. All right. Going into bracket B, JBJ, Logan Chamberlain. Uh, yeah, Bernie. I mean, obviously. You're, you're going to be hard pressed to find a better pair than those two guys right now. Um, David Morris, Ethan Walker could be dangerous as a nine seed. Uh, I just, I mean, obviously Danny Seals, you had your one. I've been up and down at times. I think Morris Walker going to give them the best game. However, they're going to get through that top half. Ryan Wick, Alex Hicks, mom is one day going to shoot me in the face. Okay. And I, and I understand, but I need something from him. At a national, at some point, <laughs> in right? the face. it's got to happen from him at some point at a national. Not in the pro blind draw. It's He's got to be in singles and doubles. I need to see something for him. I mean, we never see him late. They 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 play well enough, and then they get taken out before they get to finals of brackets. And I just I've got to see them have. I mean, I've got them making. I'm just pushing him because I want them there playing Logan Chamberlain, Justin Burton Jr. in the finals of this left side to get to the finals, but you can't go against JBJ and Logan Chamberlain. It's can't tough. Do. That's definitely tough. All right, Anthony, how about the right? All right, bottom, uh, or starting with the top, I actually like um, a little bit of an upset. And we say upset, but maybe when you break it down, it isn't. Harbaugh and Morellis are at the 26th seed. They got to go through Zockline Halbert to come out of the top. They haven't really been killing it like we thought they would, but again, uh, you're dealing with a big, a, a major bag change for De Devin Harbaugh going over to Morellis's bags. They're working new as a partnership. I actually like Harbaugh Morellis taking down the top ten team in Zockline Halbert to come out of the top, and in the bottom, this is Birchfield and Rawls's quadrant. Here's what's kind of crazy. If I look at that, you should say they are going to own the bottom half, and I'm actually going to pick the team that's going to challenge them the most. It's not the six seed Cobb Costanza. It's not the 14 seed Spees Cassidy. 
It's not the 19 seed dual Coy. I like out of the 27 seed, Jordan Kimbrell and Blaine Rozier to maybe force an upset and go through a Birchfield Rawls to come out of the bottom. Um, but ultimately, I'm going to take the 26 seed. Harbaugh Morellis, get it clicking here at Natty Four and take out a right side of a bracket. They seem due. They do seem due. Yep. All right, bracket C, Philip Lopez Jr. and Mark Richards, Bernie. Uh, I mean, how good are those two guys when you put them together? I mean, you look at the 16 seed, Dave Sutton, Jeremy Frazier, could be solid. Duncan Klimmer, Noel Monza, I like a lot. Eric Anderson, Timmy Jonas. Um, Hunter got Noah Wooten, Hunter Thorne there is a 17. This is actually a pretty loaded quadrant, if you yeah. ask me. Uh but if you said, put a gun to my head and said, all right, you've got to bet some money on this. I got to take Lopez Jr. and Mark Richards to get through that that half. And then coming down, the Hunts, Trey and Bobby, solid. You never know, Doug, Doug, Doug Zapp, Bill Hadley can always give you some trouble. Dylan Turpin, Caleb Franklin, I like a lot as a five. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have Dylan and Caleb playing – yeah, it's going to be Dylan and Caleb playing against Mark Richards, Philip Lopez, to see who gets to that final. And I hate to stay chalk most of the time, but it's going to be Mark Richards, Philip Lopez Jr. Anthony, how about the right? Pretty lot light top right. You've got Hisner Henderson as the top seed. I'm just going to try and help pick up some time here. I think it's going to be Hisner Henderson versus Shibner Landis. If we go into the bottom right, you've got Foreman Creek Killer. Who's going to challenge them? Rawls Kingsbury. I like them down there and the way that they've been playing. I actually like Rawls Kingsbury coming out of the bottom. Hisner Henderson coming out of the top. Man. How about how about how about Rawls? Oh, that's tough. That's <laughs> tough, tough, man. I know. How about Rawls Kingsbury getting it done? Clicking together in doubles and coming out of the right side, going through the top 10 team in Hisner Henderson. There you go. All right. Our last bracket. D Grindersleeve Batson. What you got, Bernie? I mean, can they repeat? Grindersleeve, Batson, national to national. It's tough. It's really, really hard to do. But looking at this bracket, I mean, looking at this quadrant or this, yeah, this quadrant on this side, I mean, Holland, Voyer, solid, fun to watch. Math is Singleton. But I, I, I'm liking Eddie G, Grindersleeve, Caleb Batson coming out of that top half. The Gores as a four seed are ridiculous. I, I love them together. Ruben Power as the five. I'm taking the Gore. You know what? I'm taking the Gores on this side. The Gores take down Eddie Grindersleeve, Caleb Batts, and the Gores get to the final of this bracket. There you go. Anthony, the right? Right side is going to be in the in the top half is going to be your, your dirty style game versus your running bags game. You're going to have Hamilton and Cano versus Maudlin Bubenheim, which is uniquely a rematch of one of the shootouts, right? Mm -hmm. Hamilton and Cano have been to three, yeah. lost three. One of those came from Maudlin Bubenheim. Um, I see Mod Hamilton and Cano coming out on top of that one. In the bottom, I'm actually going to pick a sleeper team. You've got Shermerhorn and Eastead out there. I kind of like out of the West, the Sasweta brothers mm. upsetting Shermerhorn and Eastead, and it's going to be a Hamilton-Cano versus Sasweta brothers final. I have to say Hamilton-Cano because I got a hot take still out there that they're <laughs> going to win both a shootout and a national world's. I thought they were going to get the shootout this weekend, which would set up this national here. Uh, so they got to get a win. I'm going to go Hamilton Cano out of the right side. All righty. Let's go ahead and dive into what's going on with the teams right now. We're going to have two broadcasts on CBS Sports Network. Friday, June 30th at 8 p.m. Eastern, the Kentucky Colonels will take on the Virginia Cutters. And Sunday, July 2nd at 1 p.m. Eastern, the California Slingers will take on the Michigan Marauders. Look at some playoff scenarios for the North. The Ohio Aviators have clinched a playoff spot already, and the Ringers have a 2.5 match lead on the Marauders. The, Marauder, the Marauders basically have to go 4 0 this weekend, and they need the Ringers to go 0 3. For the South, both the Coasters and Freeze can lock up a playoff spot by winning one match this weekend and the Sliders losing at least one game. The Central, the Mays can clinch a playoff berth by winning two-thirds matches this weekend or by having the Spinners lose two out of four. They have a 2.5 match lead. 
The race between the Bully Baggers and the Spinners is tight. That match is, is going to be streamed on Saturday at 9 a.m. on ACL Cornell TV, and it may determine who goes to the playoffs. The Bully Baggers have a one-match lead on the Spinners. And lastly, in the West, the Timber have a 1.5 match lead on the Burn. Either combination of winning two matches this weekend or the Burn losing two will send the Timber to the playoffs. The Slingers are just a half a match ahead of the Burn. Plain and simple, the Slingers need to finish this weekend with a better record than the Burn. Their match Sunday against the Marauders may determine whether they make the playoffs. All right, it's time to get into power rankings. So yeah. Uh, yeah. let's do it. We're going to um, have uh, you go first, Bernie. So if you could please give us your power rankings, and then we'll have Anthony do the same. Pro doubles top 10. I always cheat when I do power rankings. So we have a tie at number 10 right out of the gate. You're such a cheater. I am. Joe Niestet, Jeremy Shermerhorn tied with Tanner Halbert, Eric Zocklin as my 10. Obviously, okay. I went and looked through. I looked where the rankings were, and then I did eye tests. Some are on the outside in, some are on the inside out. But that's my tie at number 10. Wait, who's number your tie at 10? Jo uh, Tanner Halbert, Eric Zocklin, Joe Niestet, Jeremy Shermerhorn. Gotcha. I've got them kind of tied, even though one is on the outside looking in. Tanner and Easy technically are there in the top 10. I just don't feel them playing as well as their ranking is, which is really strange to say out loud. But number nine, Whedon Feldsmith. I like the Ryans. I think they, you know, I, I think they vibe together. I think you mentioned it earlier, Anthony, about Ryan having some stuff to, uh, Ryan Wienfeld have, obviously having to go through some very traumatic stuff and, and have has that affected his place, I'm sure, but they're still playing really well. Number eight, Old school, Cody Henderson, Adam Hissner. Love it. Love those two guys together. I think Cornhole's better when they're really good as a doubles team, by the way. I really do. Number seven, Kyle Malone, Jimmy Humans. It wasn't that long ago that everyone thought Kyle Malone was the best player on the planet. It just yeah. really wasn't. And if we can kind of shadowed by some of these other rookies. Yeah, man. but I mean, if we can get some of that back from Kyle, Jimmy's, Jimmy's going to be Jimmy. Jimmy's very steady as a player, but I like them as number seven. Number six, Eddie Grinder, Sleeve, Caleb Batson, especially coming off the last national where they won the doubles. I think you have to, since they won that, you have to put them in your top 10. Personally, I've got them at number six. Here's a team from outside the rankings that I've got all the way at number five because I, they're just playing better now than they were early in the season. Matt Guy, Jamie Grant. Hmm. As a doubles team, wow. they're just playing better now. And so I've That's got them at number five. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I got, I got to set something up. Number four, which is probably low. Mark Richards, Philip Lopez Jr. Okay. But anytime you've got someone in the top four, you're, you're thinking they win brackets. And that's what Mark and Philip do. Number three, Gavin Cano, Fisher Hamilton. If they can figure out what to do on a broadcast court court, they might be the best doubles team in the world. Right? Number two, Justin Burton Jr., Logan Chamberlain. I mean, what else needs to be said about the two Enough of these guys? Said. I mean, they're, they're just they're just ridiculous. And even though I didn't pick them because I didn't have them on my side, my number one team, Tony Smith, Jacob yeah. Trusinski. I like it. Oh, yeah. There we go. All right. Let's hear yours, Anthony. All right. Similar to last week, I'm going to give you the top 10 teams, doubles teams, after dropping your worst performance. Now, Hmm. disclaimer this is my math this math doesn't exist this isn't uh there's <laughs> there's no uh list out there this is this is me going in pulling the data running the math getting crazy in spreadsheets now i've checked it multiple times and i feel confident but here is what it looks like per my math when you drop the worst performance number one now and number one after dropping worst performances it's gonna stay with tony smith and jacob Trzinski. two finals appearances They've gotten the double or the bonus points in both times, so they're going to hold the number one stop spot. Logan Chamberlain and Justin Burton Jr., number two now, number two after dropping the first. They have a first and a third overall, while Tony Smith have a first and a second overall. So there's the difference, that one little position. Um, number three, who's number three now, and number five after dropping the worst. So they're going to fall a little bit. Philip Lopez and Mark Richards. Um, why? Uh, uh, Joe K and Jeremy uh, S come all the way from the 12 spot to the number three spot in the world after dropping the worst. Hmm. They had a 74th place finish at Natty three gone. Right. And they have a second <laughs> overall and they have uh, a third overall. So you put those together. Uh, Phil, that's uh, Lopez and Richards um, had a second and a fifth. So that one little difference is going to, 
is going to do that. No change for um, uh, Grindersleeve and Batson. They're going to stay at fourth. Uh, we talked about Lopez and Richards moving to fifth, jumping up one spot um, and, and from the three-way tie. So currently there's a three-way tie at seventh to the sixth position is Ryan Smith and Ryan Wiedenfield. That pushes Kano and Hamilton down two spots to the seventh position, tied with Malone and Jimmy Humans. Um, yeah, so they're seventh overall now and will stay seventh. So that's your seventh, eighth. Uh, falling from sixth to ninth after dropping worst is Cody Henderson and Adam Hisner. Very consistent on the season, though. They're going to keep their fifth and ninth overall finish from Natty 2 3 and dropping a 13th overall finish. So they could come out to Natty 4 and suck it up and mm-hmm. still be in a good position because they'll have that fifth, ninth, 13th. But if they can come out in better 13th, we might see them going up the ranks. Um, and then jumping up, um, let's see, jumping up from the 10th spot to tie with Hisner and Henderson to the nine. So you're going to have your tie at nine. 9-10 spot and pushing down Halbert Zockline, who's currently tied at seventh and pushing down Birchfield Rawls, who are currently tied at 10th is Creek killer and Foreman. Yeah. So they'll, they're actually going into this national as the number tied at nine. So nine, 10, um, they had a strong run that, that, that Natty three in Portland, which earns them a top 10 finish. Um, so that's going to be my top. That is your top 10 after dropping worst worst performances. Interesting go. is to see if is what scenario it would take to move Smith Trzinski out of number one, right? Because they have a one and a two, you said, right? Yes. Yeah. So if they get a one or a two this national, it's going to be really difficult <laughs> to get them out of that spot. So here's but what's unique. Yeah. I can give you a little bit more information. They're 12. Once you drop worst, they're going to be 12 points ahead of the number two spot. And the bonus points come in 20, 20 bonus points for second and 40 bonus points for first, I believe. So if they can get that bonus point and Jacob Trzinski and, uh, and Tony Smith don't, then they, they're going to take over. But they're, they, they're probably going to need some bonus points to do it. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. All right, and it's time for hot takes. Bernie, you got a hot take ready? I already threw one out there. I think more, I mean, it's not a terribly hot take considering what kind of player he is. Mark Richards either wins in singles, either wins in Detroit this weekend or he wins world championship. He's winning one of those two in singles. What, how, what's, how likely that he wins both in your mind? Both. It's too hard. The talent's <laughs> too deep. I mean, I mean, as good as he is, as focused as he is, as just rock solid a player as he is, it's just too hard to win back to back, which he would have to do in yeah. that case. So it, it's just, I can't give you a mathematical formula on how hard that would be. I just think it would be too hard, but he's winning one of them. Okay. Anthony, what's yours? So uh, I'm going to be in Detroit. I'm going to join you guys in Detroit. So I'm going to be doing the the USA Cornhole Forces event uh, for that broadcast. So I thought, hey, let's let's grab a hot take off of that one. I'm going to go with Chris Fagan and Johnny Cox win wow. USA Cornhole Forces. And that's a so double. Just event. doubles that event. Just doubles, yeah. Just I believe doubles. it's just yeah, just doubles. Yeah. It should be just doubles. Okay. okay, cool. All right, my hot take is um, maybe not hot to some people, but I'm gonna. So I'm gonna do. I'm gonna up it. So I was gonna go JBJ and Chamberlain to win doubles. That's not hot. But I'm gonna, not. It's hot. not hot. It's not hot. Hold on. <laughs> that's not even what lukewarm. If, what if I pick JBJ for another sweep? That's hot. That that's hot. hot. All right. That there you go. Hot. <laughs> so wow. I told you. I told you JBJ I'd with the sweep. Man. That, that, that's that right, would huh? be that would be a new record, right? Yes. I don't think we've yeah. had a sweep twice in twice. one season. That's right. Well, Holy that's smokes. what we're doing. That, that, okay. That's a, that's a big one. That's I like it. Doing. I like yeah. that. All right, guys. That's all we got time for. Uh, we'll see you guys all next time. Thanks so much for joining us.